Hello. I, I feel like Balotelli from. Like, you know when he tried to get a bib on. Yeah, no, but we just got thrown into this. I don't even. What's the? What's the I don't even know the line or the, what I'm gonna say. I didn't even get to say hi to Sarah. Like, what's going? Sarah's over there. She's in my ear. She says hi to you. Oh, see, 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 see. So good to see you guys today on this fine. I was about to say fine. It's been fine all week, and now it's like murky. I can see outside the window to my to my right, but it's not nice, is it? Nice. It's not nice at all. No. Nah. But yeah, anyway, that's not going to put a dampener because today we can sing in church. Jeez. I did some research, right? March 23rd, 2020 was when we went in lockdown. We haven't been yeah. able to sing since then. Word. Indoors. Word. March 23rd. Even outdoors, actually. You couldn't sing outdoors, could nah. we? I don't think. But we can sing today, sing here. We can, obviously, you can sing at home and join us for those who are watching in right and now. We're super excited that we get together today as church to do that. Everyone's going to have like trash voices. Everyone's, everyone's vocals going to be like whack. Because I was sung in like a year, but the vocals are going to be trash. So. Yeah, but on top of that, to add to the most exciting Sunday of the year, it is graduation. Come on, graduation. Hence our robes, which yeah. I, I feel like I put my own, my own on, on wrong. It's like flapping come everywhere. Out of awesome college. Graduation yeah. for Academy. We, you've been doing a full course, full course haven't yeah, you? It's been long. I've been doing an online course during COVID, but we got there. We're, we're almost at the finishing line. We're going to cross it. We're going to snip some tape, I that kind of stuff. I academic, you feel me? Yeah. Academic. He's going to pass with first honours of, of academy. Come on. <laughs> and I should have put my girls, innit? I should have my girls. <laughs> if you're interested in academy, there'll be a link in the chat right now. Uh, and uh, we're going to be super excited to graduate the 30 service, which is super exciting. Yes, sir. And then, because it, it's cold. It's freezing. Fires are cool, aren't they? Yeah, oh, this is one of them just jury transition things. Transitions. You can see it. I've got a fire pit in my garden. Yeah. Oh, you need to come around for a fire pit. Who's got a fire pit? Pop it in the chat if you've got a fire pit. A fire or some form of making a fire. This is sounding like an Alan Colley type vibe, I can't lie. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen, I've seen on Facebook, uh, this fire just been spammed around Facebook, Facebook world, music and it's video. a fire. The music video. It's not a music video, but it looks like a music, music video. video. We're sending the camp. Send the camp sick for August if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you can sir. book in via the link in the chat, and uh, it's gonna be a great time to come to the together with men. C3.uk forward slash saying camp, and uh, we're super excited to gather as men round round a fire pit. Yeah, bro. Yeah, camping. Yes, sir. Singing songs. Bring your boots, man. Bible studies. Bring your boots, boots cause it might be muddy, cause it's England. I like. But and in Jesus, Alan Colley, don't bring any nice shoes. That's what I like. What's the mum muddy for me? Don't bring nice shoes. Nice shoes but in Jesus' name, it's gonna be sun, sunny, sun, 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 sun. sun. Okay. <laughs> Which is super exciting, and we cannot wait for that. Mm -hmm. So we have it's graduation day. Graduation. We can sing, mm -hmm. academy. Yeah. A Sen camp as well, throw that there. A Sen camp. And the question for you, okay, one yay. What was your favourite part, favourite subject, favourite thing you did at Academy? Academy. Lecture, your favourite lecturer. Uh, it must have been the first lecture. First lecture? The first lecture that Steve uh, taught and he was talking about fault finders and people trying to find stuff that's okay. going to bring you down and stuff. But when you've got to be a leader, you've got to kind of brush it to the side, you feel me? So, I like yeah, that, I like really that. Like that. First lecture, it was rough. And Rob's too, I know Rob there, give me the <laughs> camera. Rob out of the camera. Yeah, his, his lecture was lit, so hey. Yeah, amazing, it. amazing. Um, and actually, uh, you can actually join us for, for the gra Academy graduation at the end of Learn Photo Service. Which Unless you're cool. from outside Cambridge, so you probably won't make it in time, but you can try. No, you're online. Oh, online? Oh, yeah, you can do oh, online. Oh, yeah, online. Yeah, I forgot like... online, you know. Aye, 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 come on. Yeah, yeah a, a YouTube 1130 service. Yeah, come YouTube on. YouTube 1130 service, which is Facebook, YouTube, all of that. All of yes, that, all of yes. That. yes. So, I'm going to pray. Pray, my bro, come on. I'm going to pray, because prayer is good. Prayer is powerful. Mm. So, right now, in your rooms, kitchens, lounge, outside, wherever you're watching, let's come together in a moment of prayer and believe God's going to be in power. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you uh, for the power of praise. And I pray, God, as, you, as we lift you up in churches across the nation, lift you up today, Father God, that we would see incredible things happen in situations and atmospheres would shift. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Lovely seeing you today online and from me and Wanye. Have a great day. Peace and love, peace and love, peace and love, peace and love, peace and love. Amen. Come on.
Good morning, church. Why don't you stand to your feet? Psalm 100 says to come into His presence with singing, and we get to enjoy coming into the presence of the Lord today with singing. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Lift your voice. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to Thee. How great Thou art. We're going to rejoice this morning. Are you ready? Come on. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah.
join with creation were creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we'd hear Christ be mad
Church, want to hear you sing this out?
that was in disarray because some thought it was all about wisdom and others thought no it's all about power and some said no it's about intellect and others said no it's about debates and others said no it's, it's about following this guy or that guy or the other guy and those that didn't want any leadership kind of said oh no it's all about Jesus let's just follow Jesus the Apostle Paul wrote to them and said this where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Question. Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. What do we preach? For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but this is what we preach. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. Gentiles, But those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For we preach Christ crucified. I love these songs we've sung today. All centered on Jesus. We have no other message. We have no other gospel for Jew and Gentile alike. That's everyone in the world. There's one hope. There's one Savior. There's one who is the one who died and was crucified and is risen again. We preach this simple, simple gospel. Jesus Christ and him crucified come on let's applaud him one more time jesus we give you all the praise we give, come on let's applaud him we give you all the glory come on let's applaud him we give you all the honor for it's all about you and all that you've achieved come on let's applaud him through the cross through your resurrection it's all about all you have done we give you honor come on let's applaud him we give you praise jesus christ and him crucified let the church say amen
going to take up our tithes and offerings or rather receive the tithes and offerings. Don't disconnect this from that that we just sung. Because this goes into that. This goes into reaching and shaping a generation with the message and cause of Christ. It's not a necessary evil. It's part of our devotion to this spread of the gospel. The only hope for our world, guys. The only hope. And so if you're online, it'll come up for you to give. If you're in the room, these are one of the ways you can give. If you even want to give with cash. Remember cash? Or a check. I don't think anyone was there. But you can raise your hand where you are now. One of the Connect team will give you an envelope. And then there'll be a receptacle that you can put it in as you go later. Just raise your hand and say, if you want to do that, you can do it. Otherwise, use one of these methods in order to give. Hey, guys, take your seats. As you do, smile at someone, whether you've got a mask on or not. They can see your eyes. Just say hi to them. Thank you for sitting next to me and singing with me. Today is our graduation day for those that are on, have been on our academy. We are absolutely thrilled with the success of our C3 Academy over the years. The way it's equipped, the way it's trained, the way it's released leaders. We think everyone should do it. And in fact, this next year, because it's all online, anyone can do it from anywhere, whatever you are, online and watching or in the room here with us. But we wanted to give you just a little snippet of what it's been about for those, some of those that have done it. In our second service today here in Cambridge, 11.30, we're going to be doing at the end of that a graduation uh, ceremony, congratulating them, and then we've got some food later for all the students and their friends and family. But we didn't want you in the 9.30 or online to miss out. So would you take a look at this about the C3 Academy. I chose to do Academy because I felt like it was really important to keep learning. It was a little while since I'd been in college and been studying and doing courses. I thought it would be really an encouragement and help my confidence as I'm teaching uh, the younger generations in our church, um, particularly in theology and leadership, that it would really develop my confidence in that area. I essentially wanted to be able to lead my family better, not having a Christian influence and knowing how to be a Christian father, husband. I just wanted to be able to lead myself better for them. Um, but also being part of the Ascend team um, and helping lead that as a ministry. So I would say one of the key takeaways for me from doing Academy is that um, it's what Jesus said actually in terms of like the great commandment which is love God, love your neighbour and for me in terms of leadership what it taught me was that I can't do leadership outside of God and um, I would completely fail and also the other aspect is that lo um, leadership is all about people um, you work alongside people, you journey with people and you build with people something that lasts so yeah that was a key takeaway for me because i initially went in it with i think a wrong um perspective of and definition of what leadership was um so that was one of the key things for me that it's yeah you need god and it's all about people and specifically for me i think it's that first term of biblical knowledge um i i thought was just amazing just the the depth of, of yeah, learning about the Bible um, in a whole new way for me. Mm. And, and as I say, that's what I felt was transformational in my relationship with God. And yeah, that was, that was just uh, yeah, that was what I loved. For me, uh, from, from beginning to end, learning uh, the difference between the old and the new, the laws, the difference in the laws, um, how applicable the laws are and how relevant the Bible is, mm. how relevant it is to each and every one of us to be responsible for our part in anybody's journey, mm. walking with Christ. 
that's the biggest thing that I've got out of Academy and I would tell anybody if you get a chance please please do it. Studying theology this year has given me the confidence in my preparation when I'm teaching in kids or in youth sharing God's word with the younger generations I've really wanted to be more confident in what I'm sharing and so I've had a depth of knowledge in my theology now and have been able to pass it on to the younger generations in our church. The part of Academy that I really enjoyed was the people that were online and I, that I got to journey with. Um, we were a diverse mix of people um, and everybody just brought their own individual characters. Uh, we started our own WhatsApp group, so we would message each other during the week, checking up, checking up on each other and um, you know how assignments are going and just helping each other so you have that support and that was from the very beginning. Um, usually with relationship you kind of it takes a while to build them but I kind of feel like there was that friendship almost instantly and um, yeah I just I absolutely loved it. I, I've lost everyone I love everyone in in the yeah in our academy group. Um, it was just a brilliant to be able to just journey with them with throughout the year. massive challenges uh, I don't want to focus on my negatives um, but as people are, are, are aware I'm dyslexic and um, I was in awe of how much computers have come along and have changed that when you can just go back and um, and, and revisit your your words and, and they help you to uh, do the spellings and and then again, the, the, uh, the on-site team that are there to help. Uh, my mentors were invaluable. Mm -hmm. My mentors were so amazing. Um, and to know that you've got a personal relationship with them too, so nothing was too much trouble. I, I wasn't embarrassed at anything to do with my writing skills or my lack of knowledge, or they just pushed and pushed and pushed in a very, very caring way, which uh, made some very, very hard situations an awful lot easier. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the support, the support that I got was outstanding. It was amazing, mm -hmm. so yeah. To anyone who is worried about Academy or not sure whether to join or not, I would say jump in. You don't know what God is going to show you and reveal and expose in you. But God wants to work in all of our lives and I've really been encouraged and my confidence has grown since doing the Academy. And it's been really important um, for me to remain hungry to learn and to remain teachable. Wow. I think you can see it's made a big impact in their lives. And we know it has. We see the change in them. And so consider it for yourself. You can book in online. I think there is the uh, QR code. You can go there. You can get involved in this next year. We would love you too. And we are grateful for those students that have gone through it this year. They're not all in the room, but can you give them a round of applause? What a year. What a year to do Academy. And you've done it so brilliantly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of the lecturers that we have on the Academy is with us here today. He's going to be sharing the word, and then we're going to be a celebration with him and the students later. Uh, Glenn Balfour is a really good friend of ours. He always comes up one of the top three lecturers every year, sometimes above me, and that's okay. Not always. And he's, he's one of our favorite uh, friends here that comes into the church. And we're in this series called Up Psalms of Ascent. And Glenn and Caroline are both here. First, we first met them when they were pastoring the uh, AOG church locally here 27 years ago. And we've stayed friends ever since. I believe the youth are going out at this point. So when we have this little bumper in a moment that will come on this little video, which is all about our Psalms of Ascent, and then Glenn will come. The youth can go out into Coldham's and you'll have a great program there. So why don't we watch this and then put our hands together and welcome Dr. Glenn Balfour. Yeah. 
Great. Good to see you all. Thank you for being here. It wouldn't be the same without you. My name's Glenn, married to Caroline, and I'm sure there's much more I could say about myself on a different um, time, uh, maybe. But it's great to be with you this morning and to bring you something for the word, from the Word of God. So are you ready for this? Yes. People online, are you ready for this? There you go. That was my wife telling me, don't forget the online people. So there you go. You're not forgotten. Well, I want to start off. You'll be seeing this series up, looking at the Songs of Ascent. And we're looking at Psalm 124. And I want to do something slightly different this week, go slightly out of my comfort zone. Um, and um, I'm not going to read you the psalm. No, 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 no. I'm going to sing you the psalm. I, I know. It's better than that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sing you the psalm. Don't need music. Um, well, you might think differently. But, but, um, but I'm going to sing you the psalm. And there's a kind of reason for why I want to do it other than I can. Um, but, but let me just sing it to you. So are you ready for this? This is Psalm 124, Mizmor Kolf Kaf Dalit. There you go. Psalm 124, Song of Ascents to David. And this is how it goes. I'm just going to make this song up. So mark that up 10 at the end. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive. When their anger flared against us, the flood would have engulfed us, the torrent would have swept over us, the raging waters would have swept us away. But praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the foulest snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That's going to be it. Why did I want to do that? Well, let me, let me give a little bit of introduction to the Psalms. I then want to give a little bit of an introduction to the Songs of Ascent specifically, and then I want to draw our attention just to three points I want to make from this, this psalm. And I, I don't know how much of this you'll have covered before, so I'll, I'll go through it quite quickly. But obviously we've got 150 psalms, 151, you get a bonus one in the Septuagint, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, but there you go. We've got 150 um, 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 psalms, and they are songs sung by the Lord's people to the Lord. So I want you to hear that. What you've been doing for the last, what we've been doing for the last 30, 35 minutes isn't some warm-up act. What we've been doing is engaged in one of the very roles of the people of God, called out of darkness to declare the praises of him. That's one of our fundamental roles. When we get to heaven, we will continue that role for eternity. We won't continue some of the other roles, but we'll continue that role. Thousands, so we've got to get used to it here. It's going to go on for a lot longer. And, and uh, the, the, um, the um, Psalms are songs sung by God people. In fact, one of the words for the Psalms is tehillah. It means praise. So sefer tehillim, the book of praises. And there's even the word tehillah just sounds like singing to me. You want to say tehillah? Uh, uh, it's just singing to me. So it's singing. And one reason why I wanted to sing it at the start of it was just to not let us forget. This is not just some intellectual exercise. It's not just that. It's much more than that. This involves the whole person. This involves me bringing myself as a living sacrifice. So it involves my physical body. It involves my emotions. It involves my intellect. It involves my humility. It involves everything about me. And I stand on the altar and I bring what I've got into the Lord's presence and I thank him for who he is. And by the way, I've said I, 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 and we tend to have this sense of it's me and God, and as a bonus, I have God's people. In actual fact, when you read the Psalms properly, it's the other way round. It's actually, almost invariably, it's we, it's we, it's us, it's the plural. 
And what's the Billy bonus is that we can carry that into our private life. That actually, even when I'm not with God's people, physically, this still works. Or digitally, this still works. And actually, and just notice the plurals, if the Lord had not been on our side, our side, and there's something about the Psalms that involves God's people together. Simple as that. Whether physically, if we can, and of course digitally, if we can't. We get all of that. And I want to say, it's interesting how... how the Lord's Prayer, the most private of prayers, when you go into your room, you know, Matthew 6, verse 6, when you go into your room, pr- shut the door, pray to God who no one can see, and he'll hear. And you look, at the, you look at the prayer, in the English translation, the very first word of the prayer is plural. Our, our Father. I mean, forgive us our sins. Wow, what a corporate prayer for corporate forgiveness. My word, how often do we do that? So I just want to just do a big up for what the Psalms are all about, which is God's people together. And that spills out into my own private world, singing and praising God. And wherever you are, make that part of your experience. Make that part of your experience. You know, the, the, um, the, um, the um, Psalms are right at the start of the third part of the Jewish scriptures. So it's poetry, it's the poetic part. We've had the law, we've had the prophets, we've now got Ketuvim, we've now got the rest of it, and it's all poetry. So there's poetry in this. In fact, the Psalms are only one of three books that have what we call cantillation marks, ancient musical annotations. So the Psalms, the Proverbs, and Job, would you believe it? They're all sung. Those three books, they are, you've actually got a way that they would have sung it in ancient times. A bit more like Anglican plain song, I guess, you know, back in the day. But that's, that's, it's singing. So I want to say, wherever you are, whatever emotions, and by the way, we see some emotions in this psalm, but you see the full panoply of human emotions through all the psalms. Wherever you happen to be, see yourself as part of God's people, and we are bringing him to, uh, ourselves into his presence and our hope is in him have you got that have you got that and and just you know check yourself is this part of my discipline is this part of my worldview okay i've got to i've got to move on here so we come to the psalm of ascents 15 of these of course psalm 120 to psalm 134 and these are the songs of ascent shir hama'alot there you go, you can have that for free. These are, the, these are the songs sung by God's people on their way to worship God. In fact, there's a little photograph that um, 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 I've put on the um, slides. And the, 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 you've all heard of Jerusalem, and there's an old city part of Jerusalem, which is not quite Second Temple, biblical times, but it's certainly medieval anyway. And just on the edge of the old city is this, is this place called the City of David. And on the way in, and there should be a photograph coming up any minute now, um, um, the, the, there is the, they've put Psalm 122. There you have it, taken by yours truly. And that's, that's just, just on the edge of the City of David, and that's Psalm 122. Shir hama'alot le David to David. Uh, and you can, just, you can read that for yourself. Um, uh, and the, again, I could go into more detail on that. They might have been sung at one of the three pilgrim festivals that are mentioned in Deuteronomy 16, verse 16, Passover, Pentecost, or Tabernacles. Um, um, they might have been written for the, for the dedication of Solomon's temple, not just for David, but by David, etc. So again, I want to say to you, whatever you do, make music and worship part of the way you enter the presence of God. In actual fact, my, my, my general sense is, is that actually we enter the presence of God by a new and living way through the blood of Jesus. But how we enter the presence of God is always with music and singing. It's always, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. And that's the way you bring yourself. So I want to say, I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know, but, but as God's people together, and let that overspill into your own world. Again, just check yourself. Just check yourself. However I am feeling, I want to make singing to the Lord and making music in our hearts to him part of my lifestyle, part of my discipline, part of my act of faith. 
If it makes me feel better, wonderful, wonderful. But I'm going to do it anyway. Make it part of my discipline. Is that okay? So now we come come on to Psalm 100. I could have said more, but I'll move on to the Psalm. So Psalm 124. What's the first point I want to make? Well, when you read through this psalm and when you sing this psalm, it very easily divides into three sections. The first section is kind of, if the Lord had not been on our side. And the writer mentions some things, if the Lord had not been on our side. Um, Verse 3, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. They kind of try to get the pun in the English translation, but the Hebrew for someone getting angry is their nose grows hot. That's, a, that's, that's, that's quite a you know, graphic presentation of what people are like when they... And there's this, there's, you know, when the Lord's angry, his nose grows hot against his people kind of thing, and they try and get it here with the flared, that anger flared and you flare your nostrils kind of thing. But that's, when people's noses were hot against us, that's, that's, that's what you could have won. That's how it could have been. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. And in a few verses time, there's a sense of we'd have been trapped like a bird. And maybe... Some of those things express how you're feeling now. I don't know how, you, how life once was for you. But it's interesting how the, how the psalmist starts by, by saying how life would have been without God. And I just want to say just a couple of little things. Just notice the mix of metaphors there, by the way. There's drowning, there's being eaten alive, there's trapped like a bird. Whichever one... Whichever one of those expresses how you can feel, it's important at one level not to be in denial. You know, God doesn't want, to, God doesn't want us to escape from reality. Abraham faced the fact that his body was good as dead, but he believed in the God who brings life. So it's not denial. So I want to say you don't need to be in a land of denial. And we've got to be careful that we don't, Give that. Oh, there aren't any problems. Oh, there's no, 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 no. The point is we put our hope in the Lord. That's the point. There's there's the reality, there's the immediate reality, and there's the ultimate reality. And which one do you live your life against? That's the point. Which one dictates to you? So you don't need to be in denial. In fact, I think there can be a very positive thing about actually sometimes just thinking about how life would have been or how life once was. It's a different preach for a different time, but Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, great little thing about, and you'll all know the verses. This is what the Lord says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. But it's interesting. If you look at the very two immediately preceding verses, the prophet has made a point of reminding them about the past. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the waters, a path through the mighty seas. He's reminding them of the exodus, of their escape from the Red Sea, the chariot, he drew out the chariots. So here is the, the prophet reminding them of how life would have been and how life's changed because of God. For then the Lord to say, now forget it. And I want to say there's this thing about the past where don't be in denial about it and sometimes actually to remind yourself of, of where you are rather than where you would have been. You know, as for you, you were dead in your trespasses, but he has made us alive with Christ. So I want to say the first thing. Where it would have been, where it would have been. And... If you're there now and you're still processing it, if you're still in the first few verses of the psalm, hey, that's all right. Just make sure you don't stay there. Make sure you don't stay in verse 3 and verse 4 and verse 5 because now pity becomes a pity party. Now this, now this journey becomes a dead end. So don't, don't let yourself stay there. You've got to move on. You've got to, and we need to move on as God's people. Whatever we're doing, whatever, and obviously people have faced all sorts of things these last 18 months. And it's not turning a blind eye to it, it's not acknowledging it. We mourn with those that mourn, and we need to remind ourselves of that sometimes as Christians. 
and we rejoice with those that rejoice. But still, we don't stay where we are. So how life would have been? Are you still with me? Okay, but the Lord is on our side. And this is what the song goes on to celebrate. Verse 6. Praise be to the Lord, Baruch Adonai. Praise be to the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. And this is how life is. And listen, remind yourself of what the Lord has done for you. And hey, you might be in a place this morning where you're thinking, actually, I kind of still need the Lord to do things for me. I'm still in that place of feeling trapped and feeling engulfed by my circumstances. Well, listen, let this, let this day be a decision-making time. There will be people you can talk to here. There will be someone you can, who can pray with you and walk you and talk you and journey you through. Um, but this is how life is in the fullness of God. We've escaped. And I just want to say, remind yourself of that. Think about what God has done for you. Um, I want to read you a little bit from the Bible. It's not going to be on the slides, but I'll read it to you. I'll just give you just um, um, a little bit of background to it. The book of Romans is, can be divided into three sections. And the first bit is the big bit. Romans is the kind of first half of the book, but it's the first of three sections. And it's Romans 1 to 8. And it's the good news for the Gentile. It's the good news for the world. It's the good news for everyone. And Romans chapter 8 is the conclusion to this. It's kind of Paul takes us on this journey. And then Romans chapter 8, now we, get, now we get into the world of what it is to be, what Paul says is, in Christ. Actually, he now is in my world and I am in his. And again, you might be here this morning and you might be thinking, I need a little bit of help with that language. I'm not sure that's my experience. Have a chat with someone at the end. Have a chat with someone and just make sure that they walk and they talk you through that. But this is the point that I want to make for these purposes. Romans chapter 8 is the conclusion to this section, but it's the introduction to the Christian life. So I want to say to you, however you're feeling, let me now introduce you as someone in Christ to the rest of your life. Are you ready for this? So this is, this is base camp. It doesn't get worse than this. It gets better than this. So this is, this is starters for 10. This is, you know, you are given some free spins, and these are those. So just listen to some of this stuff. What shall we say in response to all this? If God's for us, who can be against us? Let me put it this way. But the Lord is on our side. <laughs> so I want to tell you, this is, I'm not sure the Lord, listen, if God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It's God who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Hear me with this. God is for us. God is with us. God is on our side. And he doesn't need to give any more proof than the ultimate proof. If Christ died for us when we were far from him, how much more would he give us all things? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Or trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? After all, it's written, we consider it as sheep to be slaughtered all day long. We face trouble. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Just one word in the Greek, super conquerors. Super conquerors. Tear off your shirt and super conqueror underneath it. Um, in fact, don't, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> super conquerors. Through him who loved it. I'm convinced that neither night nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, and nothing else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. So hear me now, based on the word of God, God is on our side. He has given us his son. How much more will he not freely give us all things? We won't read it now, but Ephesians chapter 2 is another kind of passage a bit like that. The first 10 verses of Ephesians 2 it speaks about, it's a bit like the psalm, how life would have been without God. As, as for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Just the first three verses. 
Then verse 4, it starts to now, but now let me tell you what you have won. <laughs> but, you know, because, because he loved us so much, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. So where do we end? This is where I just want to draw it all together. Where we end, if, if God hadn't been on our side, but God is on our side. So where do we end with this? And this is where the psalmist finishes. Verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And this is where we end, and this is what I want to challenge us all with, where we end with, so we put our trust in the Lord. And I want to challenge us as God's people. Are we going to trust in him? Are we going to trust in him? Our help is in the name of the Lord. Just in case you've forgotten who the Lord is, he's the maker of heaven and earth. Is that okay? Just in case, can we still say that? He's the maker of heaven and earth. So, you know, he can do the big gig. He can take care of you. Um, I love the fact that we put our, we put our help is in the name of the Lord. And obviously in that kind of Hebrew word, the name of the Lord is not something that you utter. It's just the four letters. It is the four letter word that you don't mention. It's just those you know, yod hey vav hey, and it's just the tetragram. So we're not, trying to get, we're not trying to completely get our heads around God. We don't have to understand the end from the beginning. Listen, sometimes we think, oh, if I knew the answers, I'll put my trust in God. But sometimes, you know, putting your trust in God is what you do before you know any of the answers. Before you got your head around any of it. You know, sometimes we think putting our faith in God is what happens after Jesus calms the storm. No, 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 no. We don't need it then. <laughs> you put your faith in God. When you're, in, when you're in the middle of a world, you have no idea how you got there and you've got no idea how you're going to get out of it. In fact, you're kind of pretty much persuaded that you're not going to get out of it. That's trusting in the Lord. So I want to give you the challenge. Why don't we all stand? Why don't we all stand? I'm going to hand over to the musicians now. But let me give you the challenge. Wherever you are in your life, let, this, let the words of this psalm, of this song, be your reality. Let it be your expression. You might still be making your way through it, but let it, be your ex pray, let it be your expression. Praise be to the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. Um, we have escaped like a bird from the foulest snare. The snare has been broken. We have escaped. Our help. Therefore, ergo, because of this, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let this be our cry. Let this be our declaration. Let this be our conviction that we have put our hope, we have put our trust in the Lord, the Saviour of all, especially those who believe. And as I hand over to the musicians, I'm using the word challenge here, but actually let me give you the invitation. Let me give you the opportunity. <laughs> Let me give you the invite. Put your trust in the Lord. Declare it. and See how he can save you. And how he can t keep you. And how he can take you into the land that he's promised for you. Lift our voice. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Come, let us bow down before Him. His banner is love over us. His mercies are new every morning. We'll sing. Come there. 
challenged us at the end there about trusting wherever we're at in that journey of life in those seasons of life maybe some of you need this challenge maybe online or in the room here you've never made that first time step it's not a one-off it's a continuous journey of trust but you've never said for the first time I want to follow you Lord I want to put my trust in you some trust in all kinds of things but you put your trust in him in this life and for the rest of your life and for the age to come then I'm going to pray a prayer that's a prayer of devotion to Jesus it's about changing your mind it's about changing direction it's saying I'm not going to trust in my bank balance I'm not going to trust in my intellect I'm not going to trust in my own strength I'm going to trust in Jesus it's called making him Lord and at the end of this prayer when I have said an amen if you're in the room here and you've said yes for the first time or maybe a recommitment you you come back this Sunday a special Sunday this is it I'm changing my mind I'm going for it then I'm gonna ask you just to raise your hand we'd love to give you a Bible we'd love to applaud you if you're online what we ask is that in the little chat box there you say yes today yes all you have to say yes big letters exclamation mark I said yes to Jesus pray this with me Lord Jesus today I give you my life I give up control and I choose you as my Lord my leader forgive me for my past give me a new start today Lord a new start in your name I pray Amen still with our heads bowed eyes closed online just put a yes say yes we'll be in touch anybody in the room here today you pray that prayer just quickly as we finish raise your hand so I can see you anybody said yes today thank you great decision young man anyone else saying yes today to Jesus before we finish anyone here in the middle center one more time before we finish joining this young man here saying yes to Jesus anyone online make sure you put your yes in there and we'll follow it come on let's give our God a round of applause for what he's doing what he's done let me finish before we say goodbye to you guys online I just want to say thank you to to Glenn for that word yeah clap put your emojis on there I, I'm reminded I think I'm reminded every time I, I hear Glenn um, the church needs when, when Jesus ascended into heaven this is Ephesians 4 it said that he gave gifts to the church and those gifts are people that they're, they're not gifts that they've learned or that they've got the gifts from the risen glorified Jesus and they're given to get the church ready to mature us to complete us so as that we are all he intended for us to be it says we need apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists and we need them that they weren't just for the past they're for the present and when I hear Glenn I am persuaded again he's a man of great intellect he's learned a lot but it's not just his learning it is anointing as a teacher in the body of Christ and we need them my gift is is apostolic if it was just apostle building the church we'd get nowhere we're always looking to the next we're always thinking of new ground but a wise apostle knows we need these other gifts in the body and I'm grateful to Glenn for that gift that he is he's a gift to the body of Christ a teacher I think par excellence whether you all like him or not he's still one of my favorite teachers so we're going to keep inviting him so thank you come on round of applause for Glenn Balfour and if you come on Academy you get to spend whole days with stuff like that and do you see the way his brain works he puts all the Bible together he thinks of a verse over here and then he thinks of another one and how it supports it and then another passage and then he'll think of why you can undermine that and why you can add to that and what others might think differently and it all gets put together in one message and we already gave him 25 minutes today brilliant stuff so come on Academy 
and you get more of Glen Balfour, that's a good one. So sign up, it's online there for you, or it'll be on the QR code as we finish. Let's say goodbye to everyone who's online. Come on, wave to them. I can see them, they can see me. They're going to go now, and they'll have a great day. God bless you. Amen.